to uh, my scheduling. Uh, with eight days off this early in the season, playing uh, you know, good basketball last Tuesday, we tried to space it out, give them enough time with their families for Thanksgiving. Um, and then when Halil went down, there, there was a little bit of um, um, what, what uh, it's a hard word to put. It, it's, it's, we're not immature, but we're not as confident. He has, he has the, he has the confidence, and the rest of them play off of his kind of like uh, boastfulness, and not in a bad way, not not in an embarrassing way. So, um, you know, it was a down seven because we didn't guard. We shot 57% the first half, but we were down seven because we didn't guard, and that's disappointing. Um, then we went on a stretch. I don't know what the run would be. I'm, you guys probably had that run, but uh, it was because we got stops and we could get out and get in the flow. I've told the team about our three-point shooting. I wasn't worried about it because I knew these guys commit, will make shots, so uh, playing against the zone team. And a lot of our zone offense goes through a little. Uh, we had asked CJ to be more of a playmaker against the zone, and we didn't get that for about the first 18 minutes of the game. Phil, were you um, glad to see Langston get a stroke tonight? Well, I talked to Langston. Uh, somebody wrote that he was in a slump. I don't believe in slumps. I believe that the ball didn't go in for you, and let's make the adjustment. I never used that word. But somebody used it with him, and I made sure to see him the next day. Uh, I told him exactly what I saw in the last game, and even in practices where he was, the ball was in his hand too long. He was squeezing the ball, and we wanted him to uh, play freer and easier. And he's practiced freer and easier. So that was a that that was a, I'm, I'm delighted for him. He's a wonderful young guy, um, but. It's all about the win. You know, individual accolades mean nothing uh, and should mean nothing to this group. So uh, <clears throat> it was smooth tonight. He had a nice stroke going. Phil, in that second half, were you happy with the, the balance you had of offense and defense, the way the team played? Well, I, I believe that uh, one of the ways that we practice, to be honest with you, is we practice every play in practice has a winner and a loser. So if my team's playing against your team and we're on defense and we stop you, we get two points. If you score, you get two points. If I miss a three, you get three points. So uh, I reminded them at halftime that I, I thought we got casual. Now, I'm not, I'm not leaving here jumping for joy because I think we stopped. When we, had, when we got to a certain point, uh, we again got casual there uh, with our you know, fouling at the rim. And, you know, Ron and CJ, they had 18 points in the lane in the first half. They have to do better than that. I mean, we're going to play, we're going to play a really good front line a lot of times in this league. And we're going to play a really good front line on Saturday. So we have, to have, we have to do better than that. And we all have to do better than that. We have to trace the ball better. We have to deflections. Uh, you know, we didn't turn them over. We're not a turnover team, but still that's a team that came in here averaging 18 turnovers a game. And they didn't really feel us defensively. Phil, was the back injury something that Halil re-aggravated, or is it still? I don't have any idea. I mean, it was really, it was, uh, look, he bangs into people when we're 5 one out there. Uh, and that's what we did a lot of this time. Sunday we practiced, we almost pseudo-scrimmaged, which we don't uh, normally do. And it was just a play. And he just said he stepped wrong, and uh, he took himself out. And he never takes himself He. Even when, he, even when his team has a sub, he practices every play in practice. He'll argue with the guy to, not to take him out. Um, so he took himself out. He practiced. Um, I might have my days wrong. He might have done it Saturday when we were 5-0. Uh, we didn't do any competition on Saturday. Sunday, we went live. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. It was he, he did, uh, Saturday he did it, 5 one And then Sunday uh, we went live and he tried and it was just, it was hard to watch him. Uh, 
he in his smart ass way said, uh, I feel like I'm walking like coach. Um, <laughs> uh, so we didn't do anything with him yesterday. He didn't practice at all. He just iced and, and massage and uh, uh, it was his call. It was him and Bill Luke's call, warm up if he, had, if he was okay. But you know what, to his credit, he was honest about it. And even yesterday in practice, when he wasn't involved in practice, he, he sat on the baseline. Normally our guys sit on the sideline. He sat on the baseline to talk these guys through zone offense because he is our most creative zone offensive player. Coach, when, um, when American went on that 10-0 run in the first half, you called a timeout, and then you answered with your own run. Did you say anything specific to your guys during that timeout? Yeah. I said a lot of specific things. None that you can write down. <laughs> Unless you uh, work for a cable TV network. You don't? Serious okay. radio? Comcast. Comcast? Yeah. No, you can't. Okay. Phil, do teams just need reminders sometimes? No, I don't believe that, Mike. I, I believe that um, I, I've said this to the team beforehand. Uh, they were really good in practice yesterday. We had a walkthrough this morning. They were really good. Uh, but I just had this sense, like, their energy, their energy, their energy. And we've already, we have a loss. Watch, we might not have been good enough that night against Florida State. They may be better than us, but our energy didn't match the, the game. And if you get 30 occasions to, to pour it out there, and like, I'm, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, to be honest with you, that student section was full. Well, the next time that they're going to see us play, they're, they're not here for the Fairfield game. They're not here for the Island game. They're not here for the Butler game. Could be almost a month. So we want these kids to get in their car and drive back from, from North Jersey or, or, or Connecticut to see us play against Fair. You got to give them something. You got to give them that, that uh, fire in your belly is the way I put it at halftime. Talk about the performance about C.J. Hagan. Well, C.J., uh, that wasn't his normal defensive game. Uh, I thought he was slow at the draw. He was off balance at times defensively. Uh, he played with his knees locked a lot. Uh, but we've been on C about dribbling the ball, taking the ball. You know, I, I, I trust his jumper. Uh, I don't have a problem with his jumper, but it can't be all jumper. And, uh, you know, calling it the way it is, he doesn't have a back to the basket game. It's just not in his repertoire. But if he does that, that that's, we'll take that, but not at the defensive end. He will be reminded uh, in film and verbally tomorrow that that defensive effort wasn't strong enough. Coach, how important was that upset over Notre Dame? I know it was early in the season, but to motivate your squad and get them on track and ready to make a run at the Atlanta 10 Conference title. It was just a game that night, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, somebody in here after our first game said, what about the showdown with Notre Dame? A little early for showdowns, you know, unless we're Alabama or Georgia playing Notre Dame in football. Not a showdown. It was it was a test, just like all these games are tests. Uh, so this was a test of an eight-day layoff. What 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 did we look like? We weren't razor sharp. Uh, now we have to go on the road. We haven't been in a true road game yet. What's that going to look like on Saturday? So all these are tests, and you take all the tests so that you can get to the final. And the final will be the 16 Atlantic 10 games. These are all tests, and that's the way the schedule's set up. That we will test ourselves to see. You know, that was a team that ran offense and grinded. Um, and, you know, we probably come out of here with a C plus. So Notre Dame, we came out. Honestly, the kid cramps up. We win the game. We stayed resilient. Um, you know, we probably got a, a B on that, on that test. So you have to keep taking the test, and we have another one Saturday. What would you take away from this game leading to your game against Creighton on Saturday? A uh, win. I think it'll be a little bit easier to, to practice tomorrow. Um, uh, we have to uh, we have to guard interior better. I mean, this kid is Larry Bird. McDermott is Larry Bird. He is this year's Larry Bird. He's got all the stuff. That kid, Lumpkins, was really, really good. Uh, now McDermott, uh, Riche, that big kid, he's a monster. So uh, it's November. We got a lot of work to do, and we have a great chance on Saturday because we're going into a great environment against a really good team that uh, does similar. That they run play after play after play. Um, so I'm anxious to see how we handle being on the road. I think it's 
it's easier in college basketball to play at home because the noise is always for you. We'll have no noise for us on Saturday. Phil, how much playing in last year is going to help you well, actually, Donald, I was thinking about this uh, daydreaming a little bit. We actually played them two years ago in the bigger, big environment. You know, so these guys, they're older now. They've had all these experiences. So, um, you know, I, I haven't even looked at the numbers from last year. I remember McDermott had a, had a terrific game, and it was a hot, you know, get up and down the floor kind of game. Uh, but we're built a little different this year. I think we're a little bit more attentive defensively, and we're going to have to be on a Saturday against a team that really, if you look at their scores, they really haven't been challenged yet this year. One more? So ultimately, is that what carries you? I mean, people look at scoring, but you don't play defense. I guess that, you, that really doesn't. I think balance, Mike, is probably the key for this team. I think the scoring balance. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to be able to score across the line. Going into this game, we had five guys in double figures, averaging five, double figures. We had, we had four get double figures tonight. Um, you know, I just think it's uh, uh, balance. We, we, we have to play a game that is comparable to the talents that we have. And we, we, we have to guard. At, Really, possession by possession. I don't think that we're a run-out team. I mean, even tonight we shot the ball great, and still 74. I mean, we're not we're not an 85 point. You know, somebody sent me an email the other day. This team should be averaging 80 points a game. Well, I would hand them a piece of paper and say, "Well, tell me who's going to score those 80 points. How would you like to get those?" Um, so I think the whole thing for us, I think the whole thing for us is balance both ends of the floor and emotional balance. You know what I mean? Like we 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 didn't have emotional balance tonight. We didn't have uh, enough fire. Now, nature of some of the guys that we had, they're kind of low key. But to me, it's that's the whole thing for this team. All right. Thanks. Locking's open.